In this video, we're going to look at something called the continuity of flow and the continuity equation. Now, what we have here is something called a converging duct. A converging duct means it gets narrower as we go along the length of the duct. The opposite of a converging duct is a diverging duct. And the equations that we're going to look at in this tutorial are applicable to both. Now, what we know is that any volume of fluid that flows into the duct at the left hand side must flow out of the duct at the right hand side. If we were to put one meter cubed of fluid in the left hand side, then one meter cubed would have to come out at the right hand side. There's no other entry or exit for fluid to come into or out of this system. This is what we mean by continuity. So if we would have one meter cube of fluid flowing into that duct every second, then we would also expect one meter cubed of fluid to flow out of that duct every second. Now what we're referring to there is something called the volume flow rate, because it's the amount of volume flowing into or out of a system every second. And our units for that are meters cubed per second, and the letter that we use to denote volume flow rate is Q. Now directly underneath that we have something called the mass flow rate. And mass flow rate is represented by M dot, where the dot tells us that it's a flow rate. Now as volume flow rate is measured in meters cubed every second, mass flow rate is going to be measured in kilograms every second, or kilograms per second. Now once again, if one kilogram of fluid flows into our duct every second, then we would expect one kilogram every second to flow out of our duct. We have a couple of basic equations. The first equation tells us that volume flow rate is velocity times area. Now because we've just said that the volume flow rate into the duct is the same as the volume flow rate out of the duct, we can generate a new equation that tells us that V1A1 equals V2A2 where V is velocity and A is area. So the velocity of the fluid flowing into the duct times the area of the inlet equals the velocity of the fluid flowing out of the duct times the area of the outlet. Now for mass flow rate, we have one simple equation. Mass flow rate is just density times volume flow rate. Or said a different way, we could say it's density times velocity times area. So let's take a quick look at how this works in practice. So we have some information on our diagram. We have the diameters of the inlet and outlet, and we have the velocity at the inlet. Now I've also given you a density of a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, which is the density of fresh water. And the three things that I want us to find are the volume flow rate, V2, or the outlet velocity, and the mass flow rate. So let's begin by calculating our two areas, because we're going to need them in order to calculate our flow rates. So area one, we have a circular duct of diameter 180 millimetres. Therefore, the radius of the inlet, R1, is going to be 90 millimetres. But as we know, we need to work in metres, 90 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.09 metres. And we need to do the same for our outlet. We have a diameter of 110 millimetres, which means we have a radius of 55 millimetres, which is equivalent to a radius in metres of 0 0.055 metres. And all I've done there is divide by 1,000. Area 1, then, for a circular duct is pi r squared, pi times 0 0.09 squared, which gives us an inlet area of 0 0.025447 meters squared, and that's to six decimal places. I'm going to work to six decimal places and express my final answer to four decimal places. Let's repeat for A2. A2 is pi times the radius of 0 0.055 squared. And that gives us, again, to six decimal places, 0 
3 meters squared. Now I'm in a position to calculate my volume flow rate because volume flow rate is velocity times area and I can use either velocity and area pairing. Well I know V1 and I know A1 so I'm going to use V1 A1 where V1 is 8.5 and A1 is 0 0.025447. Giving me a volume flow rate to four decimal places of 0 0.2163 meters cubed per second. Now, to calculate V2, I have a choice. I can either use volume flow rate equals V2A2, or I could use V1A1 equals V2A2. But what I'm going to do, as I know my volume flow rate, is I'm going to use Q is V2A2. Therefore, the thing we're trying to find, V2, is Q divided by A2. And that will give me 0 0.2163 divided by 0 0.009503. Now once again, although I've written 0 0.2163 here, I'm going to use my calculator display, which is 0 0.2162995. And the reason I do this is to eliminate any rounding errors. So I'm going to do answer, or 0 0.2163, divided by 0 0.009503. And that gives me my velocity at outlet of 22.7612. So what we can see is that as the duct has converged, the velocity has increased. Now just to finish off, I'm going to calculate our mass flow rate, and this is very straightforward because mass flow rate is just density times volume flow rate, in this case 1000 times 0.2163, which gives me an answer of 216.3 kilograms per second. So the only formulas we need to remember here is Q equals VA and M dot equals rho Q and they're both included on the equations and information sheet for this topic.